Um, so I have sat here for a while now listening to this debate, and I really appreciate it. Uh, as um, my background is more science, and uh, there, there's a lot of different terms in here that I would love to understand just a little bit better. I know my, my husband and I have good fun when he starts bringing up financial terms, and, and then I start bringing up sciencey terms to counteract what I don't know. So a couple questions. Uh, first of all, I think that this bill sounds like it is trying to put uh, a protection on a vulnerable class in our society, and I really appreciate that. So what I would like are some real examples, if you don't mind, through you, Madam Speaker. I'm wondering if the proponent of the bill can give me a real example that maybe came forward to the banking committee uh, that happened that precipitated this bill. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Doucette. Through you, Madam Speaker. Yes, the classic example, as was alluded to earlier, that we've, we've heard quite a bit about is uh, an email uh, scam uh, where a, a senior citizen is instructed to go withdraw a large amount uh, of money. Um, there are also um, a, a lot of reports uh, about caregivers um, who uh, may take advantage of a, a senior um, by, uh, again, accompanying them to, to the bank, um, you know, stealing a checkbook uh, or something of that nature. Uh, we hear reports about uh, contractors who uh, you know, may be doing work at, at uh, somebody's house and see that they have an elderly person who maybe is not uh, very sophisticated um, and, uh, again, ask them to uh, withdraw uh, large amounts of money. Uh, this bill would uh, give the bank uh, or the investment advisor uh, the ability to sort of flag that transaction, just tap the brakes on it, place a hold on it. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Mara. Thank you so much for that. So along, uh, I know you have the, the you have a qualified person and then you have a trusted person. And this seems to be with financial institutions, but would it also include credit cards and, and credit card fraud if someone were to, or something like PayPal or Venmo, if someone were to use something like that through you, Madam Speaker? Representative Doucette. Through you, Madam Speaker. So, you know, fraud is, is fraud. So fraud occurs at one of those venues. Um, then it could be uh, prosecuted as such, investigated, and so forth. And, and those um, institutions, the credit card companies, um, or uh, the, uh, the fintechs, the Venmos, the money transmitters, uh, are going to have their own policies and procedures. So it's not exactly covered in this bill. Um, because this bill is primarily focused on the financial institutions, you know, which are most often going to be your brick and mortar institutions um, and also your investment advisors. Um, but you know, th those are licensed entities as well. So again, they have their own procedures for, for fraud, for recovering, um, uh, for recovering funds lost to fraud. Um, and if it ever escalated to the point that the person had a complaint, then the complaint would be investigated uh, by the regulators. Fintechs are, in most cases, uh, money transmitters. Uh, they could call the Department of Banking, lodge a complaint. Um, same thing with um, the credit card companies as well. But they're not exactly covered uh, with what we're doing in this bill. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Mara. Thank you. Thank Representative you. Mara. Thank you so much for that. And so just a question also about the trusted contact person. You have mentioned that this would be possibly a family member, but could this trusted contact person be a caregiver? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Doucette. Through you, Madam Speaker, yes. They, they certainly could be. Through you. Representative Morrow. Okay, thank you so much for that. With the trusted contact person, is this, um, is this a legal term? Is this something that they would have to have an approval to be a trusted contact person through you, Madam Speaker? 
Representative Tadusa. Through you, Madam Speaker, not exactly. It's only a legal term by virtue of the fact that it's now a defined term in this bill. Um, however, it also includes legal designations such as conservators, um, trustees, uh, people who have um, an agent under a power of an attorney. Um, so it has legal status in, in that respect uh, as well, through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Mara. Thank you very much for that. So I, I think one of my concerns could be that if the trusted contact person is also part of the scheme, as, as you mentioned in one of your examples, that a caregiver could be involved in, in something like this. And if, it's, it, if it is the caregiver, it, is there any such protection that we would have for the senior? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Tadoussat. Through you, Madam Speaker, yes, I, I believe there would be the um, qualified person uh, in their due diligence and investigation of the situation, uh, if they have reason to believe that the trusted contact person is essentially in on the fraud, uh, then they would be able to place a hold. But the, 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 the real purpose of the trusted contact person within the bill is um, in the other scenario where um, perhaps uh, that person is not involved in the transaction, that the bank has the ability to reach out to that trusted contact person to provide them notice that there's a transaction taking place, which they wouldn't otherwise, under normal circumstances, be able to do because of a confidentiality. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Mara. Okay, thank you so much for that. And I, I love that this does protect seniors. I do foresee that there are other, I, I want everybody to be protected. So um, through you, Madam Speaker, do you foresee um, that this, well, I guess that would be speculative. Um, I guess I would like to know if this covers any other classes of, of people that may require protection too, maybe intellectually disabled adults, or um, even, quite frankly, sometimes maybe our, our younger adults that are just getting started with with banking as well. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Doucette. Through you, Madam Speaker. No, a good, uh, a, a good point and a reasonable question. Uh, but no, this, this bill just uh, eligible adult is defined as uh, persons over the age of 60. Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Mara. I believe that's all my questions for now. Um, thank you so much, and I will be supporting this bill. Thank you.